fancy making some super cute dungas with us? These are our Stitch Sisters DIY dungas. They've been super popular on our blog, so we thought we'd create a video tutorial. Oh, it's so awesome. Grab some fabric, get to your machine, and let's make some dungarees. take your measurements. <gasps> so before you can create your dungaree pattern you're going to need three measurements and they're all really simple. Now I'm going to take Nikki's but you could oh. do this for yourself if you're standing in a mirror or something like that. So the first measurement we're going to take is going to determine the overall length of your dungarees and to work that out we need to measure from the height of your underarm. Now, if you're not sure where that is, you can do what I've done here with Nikki and tie a piece of elastic around your chest, put it right up as far as it will go, and then that will be the perfect place to take your measurement from. Now, you can see that the dungarees, the finished dungarees, actually finished below, but that's because the hem allowance is already built into this measurement. So all you need to do is measure from the underarm level, and you're going to take a tape measure and I'll just hold, hold it at the front and decide where you want your dungarees to end. Now we're gonna add some hem allowance or turn up allowance later, so don't worry too much for now. What we're looking for is your finished dungaree length. So if I actually use the ones that Nikki's wearing to determine her overall length, I can see that 51 inches Ooh. would be the length that she would want overall. Now yours will be different depending on your height, so it can be any measurement at all. Um, that's measurement number one. So the second measurement that we're going to take, whilst we've still got that up and it's a bit of a funny one, <laughs> is going to be your crotch depth oh, measurement, okay? That sounds now, scary. Now, it does a little bit, it doesn't it? <laughs> it's a bit funny, you can do it yourself, um, but the mm. best thing to do is put on a pair of trousers or shorts that actually has a crotch seam, so where your leg seams intersect because that's going to help you get the measurement. And we're going to measure from the same place, so if we'll you hold that again. there, but this time we're going to run the tape measure <gasps> through your leg, so I go into a squat position, <laughs> <laughs> and we want to see what the measurement is to get to that kind of centre, middle of your undercarriage if you like. Love that. Um, that's what you want to hear, isn't it? So let me uh, get down and tell you what oh, this is, Nikki. Don't examine my undercarriage too much. 26 inches. Okay. Now to give you an indication of how this changes depending on the length of your body, mine's 24 because mm -hmm. Nikki's longer in the body than I am, yours can be any measurement at all. Yeah. So that's measurement number two. Measurement number three is even easier, you'll all know this if you're a dressmaker, it's just your hip circumference. So you're just going to oh. run a tape measure around your hips and take that measurement. Now contrary to what some people believe, especially if you haven't made clothes before, your hips isn't your where you take your hip measurement isn't actually where your hip bone is. No. Usually people are wider, uh, lower down than that. So it's a yeah. good idea just to move the tape measure up and down a little bit to make sure you're getting your widest measurement. It may be at the hip, it just depends so on shape people. you are. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Everybody's yeah. body is different and these are very inclusive <laughs> style Dungos. of dungarees. Now the other thing that's worth bearing in mind is that these dungarees have so much ease built into them. So they're really roomy, they're meant to be oversized. And you're going to add that on when we do our calculations in a second. So don't worry about getting the perfect hip measurement. If you're an inch or two out, it's really not going to make that much of a difference to the overall fit. Right, next we're going to draft your pattern. You'll need a pencil, paper and a ruler. Before we can make your pattern, we need to do a few quick calculations. First of all, take the length measurement, your finished desired length which for us was 51 inches. Next, decide if you want to add turn-ups. If you do, add on an extra four inches. Now work out the total, which for us is 55 inches. Next, take your hip circumference measurement and then divide that by four. So for us, that's 10 and three quarter inches. We're going to add some ease, which is five inches. And then adding those two together, we get a total of 15 and three quarter inches. Finally, add the crotch measurement you took, which for us was 26 inches. From our pattern paper, we need to make two rectangles, one for the front and one for the back. The length of your rectangles will be taken from the total length we worked out on the worksheets. Ours was 55 inches, and this will be the same for both the front and the back. 
For the front piece, the width is taken from the total on your worksheet, which here for us was 15.75 inches. But for the width measurement of the back, we are going to add one inch. So for us, it will be 16.75. So go ahead and cut two rectangles from your pattern paper with the measurements that we've just worked out. Starting on the front piece, label the left short edge the top, then label the top edge, the first long edge, the centre front, and then the opposite long edge, the side seam. This will help you figure out which way is which. If you included turn-ups in your calculation, you'll need to mark in the hemline four inches above the bottom edge of the paper. Starting at the centre front, on the top edge, measure and mark in three inches. So from this mark, and running parallel to centre front, we want to measure out and mark our crotch measurement which for us was 26 inches. Then from that line, square out to centre front. Now grab yourself something round, we're using this pot, to just curve off that corner. If your curve looks too deep, just try again with a larger circle, just like we've done here. At the side seam, measure six inches in at the top edge and make another mark. Now down the side seam, measure between 10 and 12 inches. Depending on the length of your body, this will dictate the opening of your dungarees. So if you're longer in the body, go for 12, and if you're shorter, go for 10 or 11. Then from the mark on your side seam, draw a line two inches in. Now connect this to the mark at the top edge. Again, we want to curve off this sharp angle we've created, so grab back your circle and use that to create a small curve. Moving to the hemline, mark in three and a half inches on your hem. Take your ruler and then connect this to your crotch line. Now take your ruler and extend your crotch line all the way from centre front down to the side seam. This is to indicate where your dungarees will be at their widest. Now we want to mark two inches above and two inches below this line on the side seam. Back down at the hem, measure two and a half inches in on the side seam and then connect this to the lowest of your two marks. Then moving to the top of your side seam, measure one inch in on that line and then connect that to the higher of the two marks. That's your side shaping done for your dungarees. If you are adding turnips to your dungarees, we need to add a little bit of shaping. So if you're doing this, fold up the paper along the hemline and trace through the position of the legs onto this paper. So that's your front pattern done. Let's get it cut out. Let's just quickly label the front so we know we need to cut to in fabric. Moving on to the back, we're going to start again by labelling the top, the centre front and the side seam. We also need to draw in our hemline four inches above the bottom, but only do this if you've allowed for turn-ups. Moving back up to the top, we are again going to measure out from centre front, but this time we want to do four inches. This is because the back crotch needs to be deeper than the front crotch. Once again, we'll extend that line parallel to centre front until we reach whatever your crotch depth measurement was. Ours was 26. Again, we're going to square out to the centre front to create a right angle. And then we can grab back our curve and soften that edge. We do want a deeper curve on the back, so use a bigger circle. This time at the top, we're going to measure in seven inches, and then we'll measure down along the side seam whatever measurement we used on the front, so between 10 and 12 inches, whichever you chose. Again, we'll square out two inches and then connect that to our seven inch mark. Grabbing that curve again, let's round off that corner. Moving back down to the hemline, we're going to measure three and a half inches in from the centre front and then connect that to the crotch point. 
Once again, we will square out from the widest point of the crotch from the center front all the way to the side seam. Now make your two marks two inches either side of that line. Now back at the hem, measure two and a half inches in from the side seam and connect this to the lower of the two marks. Then at the top of the side seam, measure in one inch and then connect that to the higher of the two marks. If you're using turnips, don't forget to add your leg shaping, fold the paper back on itself along the hemline, trace in the leg shape, and then open it back out. Now go ahead and cut out your back. Let's add a label to the back, cut two in fabric. For the main pocket, draw a rectangle which is eight inches wide by nine and a half inches deep. You can leave the pocket as a square, but if you want to add some shaping, find the center on the bottom edge and then measure two inches up on each side. Connect the marks on the sides to the center to form a V at the base of your pocket. Label this as your main pocket, of which you will need to cut one in your fabric. To create hip pockets, which you can add to either the front or the back, we need to create another rectangle this time seven inches by eight and a half inches. To create the shaping, just like we did before, find your center mark, but this time we will measure up one and a half inches on either side. Connect these marks to your center mark to create the V. Label your hip pockets and you'll need to cut two in your fabric. The final pieces you'll need to cut is a strip of fabric that is four inches wide by 60 inches long. You can just cut one of these or you can cut two shorter lengths that are four inches by 30 inches. You will also need to cut a strip for your loops which is two and a half inches by 10 inches. You don't need to make a pattern for these pieces, you could just cut them straight from the fabric. Next it's time to choose some fabric. <gasps> oh no, no, <gasps> yeah. You will need two to three meters of any medium weight woven fabric. If your fabric is wide enough, you may be able to put your pattern pieces side by side. This will use considerably less fabric. If your fabric is not wide enough and you have a multi-way print, you could cut them on the cross grain. If your fabric is not wide enough either way, you will need to sit them and cut them underneath each other. This will of course use more fabric. Sometimes it helps to turn one of the pattern pieces over. This just helps them fit more snugly together. New to sewing or need a refresher? Then why not check out our free Learn to Sew class? We'll have you making friends with your sewing machine in no time. So now it's time to sew. So grab yourself a needle and thread. Oh, <laughs> Take your main pocket and press under a quarter of an inch at the top edge. Then press under an inch and a quarter to create your hem. Top stitch the hem in place close to the fold. After top stitching, fold under one centimeter seam on all of the remaining four sides and press really well to get nice sharp corners. Repeat for your hip pockets if you're using them. Take your loop piece and fold it right sides together. Sew along the long edge at one centimeter seam allowance. Repeat this with your strap pieces, either your two short ones or your one long one. Once you've sewn your loop and your straps, then grab a rotary cutter or scissors and trim the seam allowance down to about half. To turn them through to the right side, we like to use this turning tool from Prim but you could just use a safety pin attached to one end and then fed back through itself. Once you've turned them all through, make sure that the seam is centered on the back and then give them all a good press flat. You'll need to tuck in one of the ends by about a centimeter before you press. Then top stitch each long edge and across the folded under edge on the straps. Take your two front pieces and lay them right sides together. Then pin and sew along the centre front crotch seam. Once 
Once sewn, finish the raw edge with an overlocker or zigzag stitch. Then open it out and press the seam to one side. Next we need to hem either side of the front. We're going to turn under by one centimetre and then turn a second time, press and stitch in place. Then at the top edge, press under one centimetre or three eighths of an inch and then again at one and a quarter inches and stitch close to the fold. Once that's sewn, it's time to attach your main pocket. Grab a ruler and measure three inches down from the top along the centre front seam. This marks the top of your pocket. To find the middle of your pocket, fold it in half, align it with the centre seam, pin your pocket in place, being careful to stay away from the folded edges. This will allow you to sew with your pin still in place so that your pocket doesn't move as you go. Top stitch the side and bottom edges of the pocket close to the folded edge. If you want your hip pockets to also be on the front of your dungarees, fold your front piece wrong sides together so that the right side of the fabric is facing you. Then to find the widest point, find the point of the crotch and then using a ruler, trace that back along to the same point on the side seam. Use a pin to mark a reference point. From that reference point, measure five inches further up your dungarees. This is going to be the top of your pocket. So grab a pin and position that somewhere inside the fabric to help you line up the top of your pocket. Line at the top edge of your pocket up with your pin and then ideally you want your pocket to start one and a half inches in from the side seam. Measure that to make sure it's straight. Reaching between the layers to make sure you're only pinning the pocket to one side of your dungarees, go ahead and pin the pocket in place just as you did for the main pocket. Repeat with the other pocket on the opposite side. Then top stitch the side and bottom edges of the pocket as before. Now that your hip pockets are attached, we're going to move on to attaching our loops to the top hem. Grab back your loop piece and then fold it in half and cut into two pieces. Making sure it's straight, bring the two raw edges together and finish them with an overlocker or zigzag stitch. Once finished, we'll attach the loop to the underside of the hem. Match the finished edge of the loop up with the bottom edge of the hem and secure in place. Then on the front side, we're going to sew a box to secure it in place. Moving on to the back, we'll start again by laying them right sides together, then pin and stitch all along the center back crotch seam. Once sewn, overlock or zigzag your edge to finish. Then open it out and press your seam to one side. Once again, you'll need to hem each of the edges with a double turn of one centimetre or three eighths, and then again repeat the hem at the top with one three eighth turn followed by an inch and a quarter. Press and then top stitch close to the folded edge. We're now going to attach our straps to the back in the same way we attach the loops to the front. If you have one long strap, cut it in half and make sure you have two finished edges. Then finish the raw edge on each strap and align it with the bottom of the hem. But this time we want to turn it so that it matches the angle on the hem. This will allow it to go up over your shoulder. Once positioned correctly, pin in place and then stitch using a box as you did for the loops. Next, take your back and lay it on top of the front, right sides together. Pin along each of the side seams do this on both sides, then stitch with a one centimetre or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Once sewn, go ahead and overlock or zigzag to finish your raw edges. To sew the inside seam, we're going to start by matching the two crotch seams. Bring them together and line them up before securing them with a pin. Then pin and sew the inside leg seams. Once sewn, go ahead and overlock or zigzag. 
To hem your dungarees, start by finishing the raw edge by going all the way round with an overlock or zigzag stitch. If you're not doing turn ups, just go ahead and turn the required amount to the inside, press and then stitch it in place. If you are doing turn ups, start by drawing in the four inch hem allowance that you added to your pattern. Then take your raw edge and you want to fold it back so that it covers that line by roughly a centimeter or three eighths of an inch. Press this in place and then stitch close to the finished raw edge. Once hemmed, turn your dungarees right sides out and then you can turn back over your turn up just before your stitched line. Press again in place and then if you want to, you can secure the turn up in place by stitching in the seam line on each side. That's it, your dungarees are all sewn and ready to wear, but let's quickly show you our favorite way to tie them. Pass your strap through the loop from the back to the front. Then feed the strap around underneath from the outside to the inside, leaving a small loop, then pull the strap back down through the loop to tighten. The great thing about these oversized dungarees is that once you've secured them the way you like them, you should be able to get in and out of them without having to retie every time. Do you want to learn to make more of your own clothes? Then why not check out our guides to dressmaking, where we'll give you all the skills you'll need. So how did you get on? Have you enjoyed the video? Are you planning on making a pair of dungas or have you just finished some? I've already got another pair cut out ready to go. Yeah, they're a bit like Pringles. Once you pop, you can't stop. So <laughs> it'll be dungas every day from now on. We would love to hear what you think about our tutorial. So drop us a comment below. And if you end up making them, please do tag us on social media mm. using hashtag Stitch Sisters Dungas. <laughs> they're perfect for summer. So enjoy them and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.